Your LA Wakers are back for a brand new Pokemon Draft League. We just won the P4G and now we're back to take the crown in the Pokemon Premier League, which happens to be the first Draft League we won as the LA Wakers last year. For those that don't know, a Pokemon Draft League is where individuals called coaches take turns drafting teams of unique Pokemon and battle each other weekly until one coach is crowned the champion. This is done by analyzing your 10 to 12 Pokemon that you drafted and bringing your best six against your opponent to counter their draft. This season of the PPL is our biggest draft season yet as there's 20 coaches, but there are two divisions so we're not going to be battling everybody. The twist is that there was only one pool to draft from and I was number 12. Each coach has 120 points to draft with, but there's also tiers. You could only have one S tier max, one A tier max, two B tiers, doesn't matter how many C tiers, and you must draft at least two D tiers. But if you gave up your S rank, you could draft an extra A. If you gave up your A rank, you could draft an extra B. Pokemon were split based on their viability. And this draft even allowed Pokemon I've never played with in draft, like Deoxys Speed, as well as moves like Last Respects and Shed Tail Legal on certain Pokemon. Each coach also had 27 points for Terra Captains, which were also individually tiered on a different list. Incredible Pokemon like Darkrai and Palafin could not terrestrialize, but strong Pokemon like Rillaboom and Scizor still could. The better you were, the less options you had to terrestrialize. Scizor could only terrestrialize into one type, whereas a Pokemon like Sunflora could use four different Terras. And in this draft league, Pokemon were not limited to their stab for their Terra types, so Sunflora could be electric, fire, ground, and water if it wanted to all at once. In a draft league with 20 people and you're number 12, you obviously expect to be sniped. That's why my plan was to ignore the S tiers and go right for a Pokemon that can terrestrialize that I thought should not have been legal. You see, Ogre Pond Grass was only a 14 point Pokemon, though it was 20 Terra points. When it terrestrializes, it gets a speed boost, which is nice for fast Encore, fast Spikes, and also revenge killing Choice Scarf Pokemon, so I thought it'd be a perfect first pick. Unfortunately, so did Daria, who was two spots in front of me. I wasn't even looking at the S rank and I got sniped on a B tier, but admittedly S rank Terra Pokemon. So I pivoted and my first pick was her Shifu Rapid Strike, which was an A-tier Pokemon. I've never played in a draft league where this Pokemon was allowed, and Surging Strikes plus Punching Gloves sound like a lot of fun. The Swords Dance Trailblaze teams can also sweep, and I've been terrorized by this Pokemon in the National Dex tier for months, so I figured it was time to team up. My second pick is actually my first Terra Captain in Entei. Considering this draft allows Pokemon like Deoxys Speed, Darkrai, Palafin, and more, I wanted something with strong priority that can deal with them, and Entei does just that with Terra Normal Extreme speed. But of course, I still have my powerful Sacred Fires, which will ignore Intimidate because of my Inner Focus ability. Entei can have two Terra types as a Terra Captain, so my second Terra type will be Grass, allowing me to deal with bulky waters. My third pick was a Pokemon that helped me win SPL Season 1, and has only been buffed since then. Overcool is back with the LA Wakers, and it provides me a grounded Poison type, which means it can absorb Toxic Spikes. And its Dark Typing gives me a nice Psychic Immunity for a Shifu. When I used it in SPL Season 1, it didn't have any form of recovery, but now has access to Pain Split. But its best role would be an Intimidate tank that can set up spikes and toxic spikes. I had the option of getting Thunderous Therian for my fourth pick and that would have been its third time with the LA Wakers. But this time I decided to get Thunderous Incarnate for its Prankster Thunder Wave and potential Rain Dance sets which pair extremely well with both Urshifu and Swift Swim Overquill. While it's not the insane beast it was in previous draft seasons like Generation 6, due to its lack of hidden power, which is why myself and others will typically choose Thunderous Therian over it because it makes up for it with its more special attack, I'm certain I'll find some value from this Pokemon. My fifth pick is something I've wanted to use in draft ever since it came back, but I've always been sniped. I decided to go with Metagross as my Steel type, giving me a Fairy and Dragon Resist as well as a Poison Immunity. Metagross gives me a solid Stealth Rocker for my team that can double as an Agility Sweeper, threaten opponents with mixed sets like Grass Knot or Psychic, throw off Choice Band Heavy Slams, and threaten my opponent with Iron Defense Body Press sets. With its new buff Move Pull and Knock Off and Psychic Fangs, I'm excited to try out Metagross on my team. While I don't believe it's necessary to have Hazard Control in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet Draft, and I even won the PPL with no Hazard Control, I decided this time I get Cyclozar as a rabbit spinner. Now I mentioned earlier that Shed Tail is allowed in this league, but only on certain Pokemon. Unfortunately, Regenerator Cyclozar is not that Pokemon, but it does have a nice speed tier, provides me with U-turn and knockoff utility, can potentially sweep with shift gear sets, and has a solid mixed move pool consisting of moves like Power Whip and Thunderbolt. For those wondering, the Pokemon that could Shed Tail are Earthworm, Sceptile, 
and Smeargle. This next round, I planned on picking up a Terra Captain. I was stuck between Miss Magius that would give me a fighting and ground immunity, while also being a Pokemon I had experience with Draft and Scarlet and Violet, or another Pokemon that would help cover my ground weakness, and it was also something I had experience with. I ended up going with Arbalava. This Pokemon was my kill leader in SPL Season 2, and while I didn't end up winning that draft, I had an insane amount of fun with it. Its Seed Sower ability made it incredibly hard to take down, and in this league, it can also terrestrialize the three different types that are not stab, which means I'm not limited to my normal or grass typing. So I'll be bringing back fire and fairy this season, but I'll also be going with poison as my last typing, which is amazing when you flip that from grass normal. This Pokemon can use Terra Blast as stab both before and after terrestrialization, has strength set to annoy the opponent, can get away with some harvest citrus berry sets, and has really nice coverage in earth power and alluring voice. Its base 125 special attack is nothing to laugh at, and it has great support moves like Encore, Leech, Seed and Memento. For my next pick, I needed a fairy type, and I wanted something really bulky that could take on the fighting types that I'm clearly weak to. Screamtail gave me another great speed tier, a booster energy Pokemon, a setup sweeper with both Calm Mind and Bulk Up, really nice wish passing, and just overall support with Encore and Thunder Wave for the team. It might not be the most immediately threatening Pokemon, but I feel like it blew the team together. It's also an incredibly reliable stealth rocker for the team, allowing Metagross movesets to be freed up. I've also seen Chimpact use it with dual screen giving my offense even more support. I didn't have a lot of points left, so I knew this draft I was most likely not getting an S tier, and my draft was missing one of the most important parts of any Pokemon draft team, and that's a ground type. Most of the higher tier ground types were already taken, and I didn't really expect to get one anyway. I had some options like Mudsdale, Sanaconda, Palaswine and Palisand. I had my mind set on Sanaconda because Glare would be amazing to help Urshifu and Entei out, but it was picked right before my turn. Out of that list, there was one of the Pokemon that I used in previous draft leagues years ago. It was always a reliable stealth rocker back then and had some nice priority to help me out versus dragons. And with Eviolite, Palaswine is actually incredibly bulky. I think the last time I had Palaswine on my team was the WBE. It's always been a great budget ground type that still hits incredibly hard with its base 100 attack. It has some cool options now like Trailblaze if I wanted to try sweeping with it, but for the most part, it'll probably be setting up Stealth Rock or checking Dragons and Flying types for my team. Having a ground type that can threaten grass types also helps out my Urshifu. At this point, I only had seven points left. Earlier in the draft, one Pokemon I really wanted to try out that would help out Urshifu was Sinistra, but that ended up being Sniped, which led me to pick up Arbalava once again. Because I also missed out on Miss Magius, I decided to pick up Poltergeist last. While this Pokemon is only usually seen as a Shell Smash Sweeper, and it's probably worse on my team as one because it doesn't have Terra, it gave me a Spin Blocker and something to spam Will-O-Wisp. I've seen other Draft League players like Viz use this Pokemon to a lot of success, so I decided to try it out myself. While I might not always use it as a Shell Smash Sweeper, it still makes my opponent have to fear that. So that's my team for this season of the PPL. I'll be the first to admit it's not as threatening as most teams that I usually draft, but having 20 people in one pool makes it kind of hard. Week 1 should go live next Sunday, so stay tuned for that. And as usual, we'll be doing watch togethers every week. Make sure you subscribe for another season of draft content, and if you want to go further and support your LA Wakers, and assuming it's still available, check out the LA Wakers jersey down below. I'll see you guys in the next draft video.